My name is Stephanie Craig. I was given an Indian name by some elders from Washington, Old Soul, Young Eyes. In Chinook, it is Ankadi Tum Tum Chisiaquis. I do traditional basket weaving like my family did generations back. I use traditional plants, so I go out and gather them. You can't buy them in the store. Wild hazel is actually a shrub, and it has lots of little shoots coming out of it. Traditionally, what we do is we would burn it, and then all those new straight sticks is what we use for weaving. As you can see, because it's not burned, been burned or cut back, you know, there there's angles and bends in them, and those are not good for weaving. And today we have to cut because we can't do burning. This was our way of life. This was how we cooked our food. This is how we took care of our babies. This is how we gathered our food. This was a hat to keep rain off of us. And to me, that's not art. It's a way of life because these are still used. So this is a Junkus gathering basket that is a replica of one that is in the Polk County Historical Museum. Junkus is a Willamette Valley plant that the Kalapuya used because it was it's everywhere around here. And it's so sturdy, very, very sturdy. So you can... This is a split spruce root miniature clam gathering basket for one of my daughter's dolls. <laughs> so it was made in the traditional style. It's just a miniature version. So this here is called a chalb. Um, it is made out of ash bark and it is a roasting tray. And so I would use my brush to brush out all the ash. So five years ago when I was looking for baby baskets for my children, I was pregnant with twins. No one in Oregon or Northern California made any in our style. To do what my family did, I think it's important from the family I come from um, and for all the babies to start in the right way is to have a traditional baby basket. So I finally got enough sticks and this is a newborn size. All the, all the sticks are all hazel, wild hazel, and all the roots are spruce root. So this is a full size baby basket. It is hazel sticks, and then it has the spruce root. The spruce root is what we twine with or, or weave with. And we have two rows, because it helps keep it strong. And then we have three rows on the outside for added strength. We'll fold these up and then it will be the, what is the sides of the basket. And Dakota actually did this one. So my apprentice is Dakota Zimmer. She is a Grand Ronde Tribal member. I met her at our tribe's museum and she is an archeology span student and she became really fascinated at work with baskets. I love the fact that she's in school to become an archeologist because this, this is part of it. She's gonna see these in the record and so for Dakota to have that knowledge when she's out doing field work it's gonna elevate her and I think it's important for people to see that it's not just art it's practical and functional and there's a reason for everything it connects us to the land it connects us to the place it connects us to our ancestors so where we are right now is at the Fort Yam Hill site in Grand Ronde, where the original Fort Yam Hill was put. Before the 1840s, 1850s, when the settlers came to Oregon and started taking land, it was amazing. There was valleys and, and streams and rivers. Well, there was food everywhere. The water was clean, the air was clean. The Pacific Northwest opened up for settlers and westward expansion and assimilation, tribal members, from their original homelands, from the coast, the mountains, the Columbia River, down to California border, rounded everyone up and brought them here in 1850s. And so you're removed and you're displaced. They couldn't go and basket weave. They couldn't speak their language. A lot of them weren't able to go hunting because they had to have a pass. The agenda was to kill the Indian and save the man and get rid of their tribal identity. To me, it's important and meaningful to continue on our traditions of gathering foods and 
using the land and being stewards of the land, basket weaving, our ceremonies. It's important because that's what makes us tribal people. It's important to me that um, what I do make does look good um, and not just aesthetically, but um, you know, it makes my ancestors proud and it makes my tribe proud.